a lot of people think of nature as remote or I have to be in the middle of the forest somewhere. Like you can be in a city and really actually see a lot of really cool things as well. I think the best way to describe a birding festival is this essentially a convention of like-minded people. It's like any kind of expo or convention that you go to where you know you're gonna find people who are into what you're into. It's overwhelming the amount of just sort of support, indirect support for and validation for what you're doing, why like the things that I like to do and that I'm not alone in those things. Something that's kind of a dream that's been simmering underneath the surface of our birding community for years and years and years and years and years. I mean, I remember even first starting out, people like, oh man, wouldn't it be amazing if this happened someday? And while, you know, it took a lot of really amazing folks on our organizing committee to do it and make it happen, it's you guys being here that makes it worth happening because we can organize. Thank you for joining us, dude. Oh, thank you for having us. Hi, I'm Sarah, <laughs> and I'm originally from Richmond, Virginia. I've been here 17 years to this is home at this point, and it's my first time birding. What but you, I love birds. What brought you out here? Well, the nice thing about a burning festival as a way to kind of get engaged and dip your toe into the festival, so to speak, is it's very much a choose your own adventure kind of environment. If you want to jump in and just drink the fire hose, you can do that. And if you're the kind of person that wants to sort of pick and choose elements and just put yourself in there, those are options. We really wanted to make sure that we had a space, you know, for beginners, for families with kids, for individuals that wanted more specialized experiences, for individuals who were more into the photography or sketching side of things, whatever that entry point is, we wanted to try to be as broad as possible. There is gonna be something for everybody at some point throughout the festival. And even if you literally can't identify a single bird, like you're still welcome here. <laughs> and even if the only time you talk is you say your name, when you can introduce yourself, that's still like a valid way to participate in the group. relax and have a good time. If you have a pair of binoculars, great. You don't need them. Taking your time, try to enjoy every bird that you see. If you've never been bird watching before, it can be overwhelming because there's, there's so many different species and people are calling things out left and right and you might not be able to get, uh, get on all of those birds, but just taking your time, enjoying all the species that you can see. It's such a beautiful form of mutual aid, you know, to make the outside world feel really like your backyard because it is. Getting to know local organizations, I think is very important. You'll notice at this festival that it's not just people traveling from outside of Chicago, there's a lot of beginners that are here as well. And then ask as many questions as you can. If you have a question, there's no such thing as a bad question that you can ask. We have like multiple organizations. We have lots and lots of birders, lots of really great parks. And I think we were just thinking like, we should leverage all of that in one, you know, kind of relatively easy access city and kind of get people out and about. We wanted it to be something that was very Chicago specific, that really highlighted and took advantage of the uniquely urban setting in which we're doing this, and also did its best to really reach, like you were saying, all of those different groups and interests and entry points to the hobby. Getting to meet other people is one of the most biggest parts. Festivals, we have a whole gathering of people behind me just sharing the same passions that we have and just being open. We are always here for each other and we really have a great time. My name is Haley. I have uh, some patches here and the patches I make uh, my printmaking. Uh, printmaking is a fun uh, hobby of mine, but I like to incorporate nature into all my art um, and I really love drawing birds. So birds are just aesthetically pleasing to me. I'm Diane Bilderback, president of Bird Conservation Network. We're a coalition of 20 plus organizations in the Chicagoland region, covering the six counties around greater Chicago. Like any other hobby, it's you know there's lots of ways to approach it too. Bird watching is not a one size fits all thing, and so just making sure that people know that and know that they can experience it different ways and pursue it differently and find the path that's right for them. Right? 
have seen this wider range of experienced birders maybe doing like what are considered hardcore trips, but a lot of beginners and a lot of newbies coming on trips and probably some of them for the first time learning about, you know, quote unquote, how to go birding, which, you know, can happen a lot of different ways, but just kind of giving them some of the basics so that, you know, they're kind of learning a little bit like what they like or don't like, and then are able to go out and start maybe doing some more, you know, birding on their own. My name is Benjamin Van Doren, and um, I work at the University of, of Illinois uh, at urbana champaign I work on bird migration, and I want to tell you today about maybe a couple of different perspectives on migratory birds in cities. What's one of the most important factors explaining where birds stopped over on the ground across the whole of the United States? So, um, sky glow is more important in their predictive models than every other individual land cover variable and explaining where birds are actually present. I try and provide a perspective from, from people of color. Being in such a diverse uh, community uh, here in Chicago, uh, we can open up and have this hobby become more accessible, I think is one of the most important parts. One in the same when people talk about like accessibility, well accessibility for me is to have community, to like even have the opportunity to go birding. Like maybe I wouldn't do that for myself on a daily basis, but I'll go out to see my friends. You should come just because we're like nice. <laughs> like I've never met a mean person here. I've never felt like judged. I've never felt like the people weren't there to like help me or get to know me. And I've always find that the people that come to the events just generally are excited to be outside and try something new, even if they haven't birded before. I feel like the more that I go, the sweeter it is. And it's just so low pressure in a lot of ways. Like you're not asked to be like super vulnerable or feel like you know all the bird knowledge. You can just show up and then you start to see the same faces. You know, not only is there the field trip elements and then the different kind of quality and types of field trip experiences, there's also the different programs that were happening here. So, you know, and a variety of different topics that maybe you don't get in a bird walk, but you get much more in depth in a classroom setting. Dunes is almost a more incredible story, right? Because it was all this beach. Birding is learning the entire time. Although I do lead walks, I'm still learning every day. Like today, I just, I misidentified a bird today because I missed a couple key features. And that's something I have to remind myself too. I really like to share the message of just observing and taking everything around us and taking it slow. Birding especially is a very rewarding hobby for a lot of us. As a community, we like to get together and just uh, have an enjoying time together. <laughs> And you should also feel like you can make up whatever you want as your goals when you go out, right? You don't have to identify every bird. You can just appreciate what you see. I think it's a really accessible type of hobby because there's like any way for you to kind of like gain entry into it, you know? You don't even have to have, like I said, binoculars. You could just listen to birds and enjoy them. And a lot of people are very good at, you know, identifying bird songs or bird, you know, sounds and things like that. So there's a lot of different ways to sort of, I think, enjoy it. here have seen or heard a night hawk? Show of hands. Okay, about half of you guys, and the other half of you hopefully will be amazed tonight. Your first ever night hawk experience. I really do think that probably the best way to describe it is it is a choose your own adventure. It's figuring out what parts of it do you want to get out of it and then coming to get those parts because we've kind of laid it out on a platter for you to just take it and get what you want out of it like make people realize you can do it however and wherever you kind of want. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to discover more hobbies and visit notjustahobby.com to learn more.